Hello, this time we're going to look at how to install the library on a Unix computer. I'm running OpenSUSE as a distribution. So we're going to use the source code um, because I cannot distribute the binaries due to the XCOM libraries that I'm using. I'm not allowed to distribute it. So the source code as it's installing is going to download it from NIST website which is um, acceptable. There are some requirements. You need CMake, a C++ compiler and also a GPU that supports OpenGL to run the simulation. Um, you don't need that to compile the code but to run it that's compulsory. Um, I tried to look at all the dependencies uh, and I put the command needed for OpenSUSE. You could adapt them for your own distribution. Let's say if it's Red Hat or Ubuntu, uh, these will be slightly different. So you need CMake, GCC, and C, X11 development libraries, that's all the dash devil, uh, glue might be needed. Um, EGL from Mesa uh, and GBM as well. If you want to compile uh, wrappers like Python or, or other programming languages, you need Swig and the corresponding development um, package. So Ruby dash devel for Ruby, TCL dash devel for TCL, etc. etc. For Xcode, uh, from Mac, you need Xcode. Uh, and if you need some dependencies like Swig, Python, you might use uh, Ombu. That's what I do on my um, laptop. For Windows, you need to download CMake and Visual Studio. Right. First, you need to download the source from GeForge, I mean SourceForge. And click here for example and this is going to right so that has moved so let's download it from here so source code project virtual x-ray go to files download the source code um there we go it's going to take a bit of time Download start. It's not a big file, only 70 meg. Uh, that's downloading. Going back here. And we wait. So, stop recording. Right, so download is done. So, now what can we do? So, this is the download. So let's create a new directory. Um, and go into that new directory. And here we're going to unzip the file that is in download. So that's the file. And we unzipped it. So now we got all the source code here with the different libraries. Or simple GVXR, which is a very simple version of this, and all the wrappers. And you can see here you got cmakeless.txt. This is a script used by cmake. So, where do we want to install the source, the binary? So, here I suggest to put it in. The home directory under a subdirectory, which I call G Virtual X Ray Install. So I'm going to create a environment variable because that might be useful for later. And here, well, we've already done that. So where do we want to compile MKD, a new library like GVXR-bin? Go into the new directory. And now we need to 
configure the project. So you have three options. Use the command line and run CMake. And here you have to set all the options straight away. So let's say you want to combine release. Where is it going to be installed? Here you have to make sure that your user can install in that path. By default, that's user local, where only the root should be allowed to to write. So how to change it. Uh, unit testing, you can put, leave it on, and then the wrappers that you want, so C Sharp, Java, Octave, Perl, Python 3, R, Ruby, TCL, the source, and where the binaries are going to be compiled. Or you can use CMake, which is um, a bit more interactive. So let's see. Run it. So it's going to check. You do have a compiler, and are there all the dependencies? Takes a bit of time the first time. If you run it again, that'll be a lot faster. As you can see. If you had to use CC Make instead, you can see this is more interactive. And you can go and with the arrows, you can move the cursor. And if you press enter, it's going to change the option. Configure. You can see there are messages or warnings or status. And in the end, when it's done, press G to generate. If I press LS, I should see a make file. Yeah. Or if you want a user interface with buttons and clicks, run the user interface. And here you have to set these by hand. Configure, generate, just like in the, um, using CCMIC. So you can change release here, you can change the path um, somewhere here, etc. Et so, going to compile using parallel build. So what I'm going to do is run a timer. So time cat. So I have 16 cores. So if you look here, I've got 16 cores. So I'm trying to use them all. So the CPU should be quite busy building the project. And so I'm not all busy um, at some point, but sometimes I will go up depending on how busy uh, the CPU is. You can see here the parallel build. So that takes a bit of time. There are dependencies, like here it's compiling. Um, what is it compiling? A simp which is used to load um, data, the triangular meshes. So now it's building the library. Three percent to go, two percent to go, and now it's building the wrappers for the other programming languages. You can see this is still pretty busy. So I really encourage people to use parallel build um, to speed up comp compila compilation. Job done. How long did it take? One minute thirty five seconds. And for a laugh, what I'm going to do is the same, but um, not using a parallel build. So I'm going to go back one step. I am going to create a new directory. Do the same, but without a parallel build. So go back here, configure, speed C make the project. Make so we want our timer. 
so you can see like here it's been downloading some dependencies g l v w uh, f w and if i go back to the system monitor you can see the cpu is not going to be that busy at all so most of the time the cpu is just waiting for something to do and we are waiting and we are waiting so i'm going to stop the recording for a bit and this is still compiling i can tell you for sure it's going to be a lot longer without a halal build so after four minutes five minutes the library is built and is now compiling the unit test and then that's going to be the wrappers. So, pause. Right, it's still building, and now we are doing the wrappers, so it should be finished pretty soon, I hope. Yeah, done, so let's see how long it took. Eight minutes instead of one and a half. So you can see why I use the minus J16 option. So everything is built. We can see if everything went as expected. So to know if everything is working on your system, let's say to see if your graphics card is supported, uh, we can just run the unit test. So make test. And you can see that the tests are passed, which is good news. This is what you want. So some tests are longer than others, particularly when we are trying a cubic source. 100% of the tests have passed. Zero failure. Great exactly what we wanted so we're going to install the binaries so if your if your user has writing permission you can do make install you can see that we install here if you left everything in user local then you have to use sudo you run the command as boot. Right, so let's see what we have here then. So the core libraries, the simple library, the wrappers and third parties. So we're going to look at the wrappers. So we've got, got a few here and I want to Yes, the Python wrapper. So, what do we have here? You have this file and this file, which are the part of the wrapper, and this file, which is just a test file. So, if you look at it, so it's going to look for Python and then looking for Matplotlib and the wrapper and then do a bit of a simulation okay so we need to provide that pass to the python pass so we can export python pass and then the pass of the library so this is we could have replaced this by dollar pwd and what I'm missing here is a dollar. We could have done it in. Uh, oops. Let's go back. What we could do is to change our environment. So we could modify the bash RC file so that this is done automatically. 
I'm not going to do it. So now as this is done, we can load the script and see if we have a simulation running. Uh, OpenGL is open. That's from Matplotlib. This is uh, Welsh Dragon. Uh, the incident energy is 80 cave. And here is, you can see a log scale, um, a power low scale, a log scale, and here just a linear scale. Make it bigger. And here is our simulation. You can use the scroll button. The, Charge the beam with P. You can see the beam. This is a point source. This is a detector. The simulated object has a closely. Hide the beam. Press W. You can see the polygon mesh here. Press Q to close. So we successfully installed G Virtual X ray with the Python wrapper and all working well. And at the end here, I provide a summary of all the commands that I used to install it. For Windows, I'll be slightly more complex because it's not, well, people are not as familiar with the command line as in the Unix world. Uh, so we look at how to use CMake and Visual Studio for that. But I need to restart my computer.